Chapter 36 The Song of God After every slave, animal, and sentient being was freed from the cells and cages, I guided them to the light outside, where they escaped through the rubbish bin and found a new life below. Some ran to the exit, others hobbled their way over, but not a soul looked back. With all of them gone, they'd never know the truth about the one-eyed man who stayed back. I didn't belong out there, and I didn't belong in here either, but where does one go when there is no one willing to take you in? Time for the last battle. There's still the king's brunch, said Cicero. Cicero, Cicero, I cannot fight. When I look out, I see slaves, and in them I see my family. These poor souls are tortured in battle, and yet my limbs are too weak to go on. My mouth too parched, my body trembles, the hair on my arm is standing upright, and my skin is burning. The harder I try, the more I realize that all soldiers bow to their king. My brain is whirling round and round. I can stand no longer. Cicero, everywhere I look, I see omens of evil. The experience was peaking. The dark night of the soul came to a crossroads when an obscure dark purple light started oozing out from within. T. Hammond was raising my hands when I saw a set of invisible arms. Four arms were attached to my sides and back through the peripheral sight. There was no escaping the dark night. It was happening inside this body, right within the mind, and even the mushrooms surrendered to Ma's power. But I, I, I was losing control over everything. Even if I killed every soldier, what could I do with the victory? How could I find pleasure or enjoyment after all this? These people are teachers, fathers, mothers, grandparents, sons, and daughters. To risk any more blood is war against ourselves. My breath became abnormal, veins bursting out with anger. I couldn't keep my composure together any longer. Cicero, how can we hope to be happy after all that we've done? Evil they may be, worst of wicked, yet if we kill them our sin is greater. How could we head into another battle when the enemy's heart beats just like mine? I tried to take a deep breath, but the exhale scattered my heartbeat into pieces. Their hearts are foul. They're blinded by greed, and they can't even see their own evil. They see no sin, but we, clear-sighted, are observing their ruins. I know what fate falls on a broken family, sacred rites forgotten, defiling the women, and from their corruption comes the curse of confusion and degradation of each victim. All our ancestors have been dishonored. Oh, how did we fall so far from heaven? My chest was thrust into convulsions. A panic took hold of T. Hammond's suit, but I was not content with rest. Our poor voice couldn't escape the maze. And what is left for me? What crime must be committed if I go on? Murder of soldiers or murder of a king? And even they are living beings like us. Let them come against me. Let all the king's comrades come to me with their weapons, but I shall not strike them. I will let them kill me, because that will be better. My eyes filled with tears, the heart wretched, and the mind bewildered by pity. And Cicero said, Amokli, in the hour of battle, is it the time for scruples and fancies? Are these illusions worthy of you who seek illumination? A brave man would despise these thoughts. And what is this weakness? It is beneath you. It is all for nothing that men will call you a phony. Shake off this cowardice, Amokli. Stand up and destroy the enemy. Which was worse, to win the war a murderer or to lose it as a dead man? And what if the sons of my ancestors were disguised as the soldiers like I? Is this real compassion or only a delusion? The mind was groping about in the darkness, but I could not see where my duty lies. Cicero, I beg you, tell me what to do. Be frank and clear. What ought I to do? I am your disciple. I put myself into your hands. Show me the way. But I will not fight, I told him. Cicero was smiling. Your words are sincere, Amokli, but your sorrow is for nothing. The truly wise mourn neither for the living nor for the dead. There was a time when I did not exist, nor you, nor any of these kings, nor is there any future in which we shall cease to be. Just as the dweller in this body passes through childhood, young and old age, so at the death we pass into another kind of body. The wise are not deceived by that. Cicero brought his paws together fostering a glowing light between his palms. Pure orange-white light was shining above him, and together it balanced the heavy darkness coming out from within my soul. For a moment, we came together as one. 
the yin and the yang were balanced. Feelings of heat and cold, pleasure and pain, these are caused by the contact of the senses with their objects. They come and they go, never lasting long. We must accept them. He or she who is unmoved by either is worthy of liberation, said Cicero. For this opossum was no being of the earthly realm. I was certain Cicero had traversed many paths and lives before we had met. He was my lord and guru, so I fell to my knees to worship him closer. Bodies are said to die, but that which possesses the body is eternal. Our light cannot be limited or destroyed. You have seen Ma with your own heart. Stand up and fight, said Cicero. His body was so bright that it was only right to press my forehead onto the floor beside his lotus feet with reverence. The light of life is unborn, undying, never ceasing, never beginning, deathless, birthless, and unchanging forever. How can it die? Our light requires no body, said Cicero. The kitten was perched beside me. Both of us were as near as we could get to this light. In adoration, my hands crawled to touch his feet. The self of all beings, living within the body, is eternal and cannot be harmed. Therefore do not grieve. We wear different garments, we shed different bodies, but all of us are keepers of the light. It cannot be wounded by weapons, not burned by fire, not dried by the wind, and not wetted by the water. This is the spirit of our mother and father. It is the innermost element, always everywhere, being of all beings, changeless, eternal, forever and ever. It cannot be understood through the senses. It cannot be interpreted by the mind. As long as you remember this, then how can you grieve, said Cicero. There was nothing I could say, nothing to do, yet I had to keep observing his light because this pure energy was nothing I'd ever felt before. Death is certain for the born, and rebirth is certain for the dead. You should not grieve for what is unavoidable, said Cicero. You ought not to hesitate. For any warrior, there is nothing nobler than a righteous war. Happy are the warriors to whom a battle such as this comes. It opens a door to heaven. Cicero paused and looked up. But if you refuse to fight this righteous war, then you will be turning aside from your duty. You will be a sinner, disgracing your ancestors, and people will speak ill of you through the ages. To the man who values his honor, surely that is worse than death, said Cicero. Fear is driving you away from the battle, and you will be despised by those who have admired you for so long. Even your enemies will slander your courage. They will use the words that should never be spoken. What could be harder to bear than that? Cicero looked down into my eye as I looked up to my Lord. Die and you win heaven. Conquer and you will enjoy the earth. Stand up now, son of the natives, and fight, said Cicero. Realize that pleasure and pain, gain and loss, victory and defeat are all one and the same. Go into this battle. Perform every action with your heart fixed on Marcali Jack and you will not commit any sin. I rose to my feet and stood before Cicero with T. Hammond's mask under my arm. And this is why they call it the dark night of the soul. Yes, because the ego must break before the soul finds union with our light, said Cicero. They are forever free who renounce all selfish desires and break away from the ego cage of I and me and mine to be united with God. This is the supreme state attained to this and pass from death to immortality, said Cicero.